Was that a Scotsman? Hello and welcome everyone to my Let's Play Tomb Raider 3 The Lost Artifact Expansion. Zelda is 115 speaking. So, uh, well, we are being watched, aren't we? Now, let's pick up these flares immediately as we can because, yep, a very vicious and not at all to be expected kind of trap. They made sure it's clipping through the wall, therefore, they made it rather invisible. Also, try and pivot Lara to the right as you are sliding here to make sure you can grab the ledge over here and kind of safely drop and avoid taking any damage. And now roll! Roll like a boulder! Whew. Okay. Yeah. As you remember, this is pretty much an old cheap trick in the book that I think we learned back in times of Tomb Raider 1. But while Lara is showing off, we get a shot at a sleeping dog down there. Ah, seem to have woken up. That's nice. So, see Lara, someone was paying attention after all. Now, what we found here is... Yet once again a crowbar that will apply on an identical padlock door that we found in the previous level So once again this key item is tied to a secret now There is one more key item, but that is also tied to yet another secret So they're really optionally you do not have to find them or really bother with them unless you are interested in all the secrets which Especially in the lost artifact expansion you should be they are just so well done and offer so much content now, in case you missed the harpoon gun in the previous level, this is exactly where you would find it. So, it's not to worry, but as I hinted at before, we'll need all the harpoon ammunition we can get our little hands on. So, let's do exactly that. And there should be still some more in this level, which is good. We'll, <laughs> we'll really need them. And let's get up. You might be a bit worried that there's something more to be found in that system, but really, there is not. And now, let's just see the the strange pit that the dog was having a break in. So basically we have some light seeping in. I can't shake off the feeling that that's where the Scotsman was watching us from somehow. It, I mean, the, the area he was standing on really looked to me like the beginning of the previous level with the two dogs and the family crest of the village. And I have my own theory as to who is that guy or why is he even here but <laughs> I'll get to that a bit later on but that is a mystery you will not at all reveal if you do not find the secrets in this level so even more of an incentive and you could maybe hear the dog growling from somewhere oh there he is he seems to be stuck or is he okay he's circling around and around what I'll try to do is since uh, no pistol challenge no pistols challenge has officially begun I'll try to use every other weapon in our arsenal to get through the rest of the game without the cheap uh, unlimited ammunition pistols and I'm very curious to see if we'll run out or if we'll be doing just fine. But I'm fairly optimistic, it is after all short expansion. So, oh yes, let's get back to our dog hunting exercise from the old witch times in Tomb Raider 3 and say hello to the... Oh, cute puppy! That was a very close call. I wasn't sure Lara was aiming properly, but yeah. So there you go, shotgun is really the ideal weapon for these dogs because they really like to get up close and can't really take much beating, so perfect. Yeah, okay, let's not get <laughs> ahead of ourselves, okay? Um, this really takes me back to the coastal village, I'm not sure if that was the only instance this kind of cheesy uh, horror house of mysteries trap was really used. And you just keep on crawling through because there's another one just around the corner. But really, these make me smile so much. Ah, now where would I begin? Now, for those of you who have who are experienced with some of the previous installments of the Tomb Raider games, this is exactly like the chessboard in the unfinished business expansion in Tomb Raider One. In I believe it was the Atlantean stronghold level or the the beginning of the Hive, I think. Yes, yeah, so the final level. It was a chessboard and certain tiles would trigger certain boulder movements. This is no different, although I find it to be much easier. So, first of all, yeah, I'm being very impatient. Uh, there are a couple of tiles that trigger certain boulders and some that do nothing at all. I will try to guide you through these tiles and trigger every single boulder we can. So, the one over here is gonna trigger, yep, exactly that boulder in, hidden in the shadow. Of course, if you were to see it, that would be too easy, wouldn't it? Now the one over here just triggers a movement ahead of us, so we are actually perfectly safe. 
and be very careful. This one's rather close, okay? Now, this is a rather an obvious trap. Not only is there a pickup item surrounded by boulders, but also there are bones scattered across it. So, let me just... Oh, that was a very clumsy way of doing it. Yeah, get out of the way and you are now free to pick up the shotgun shells. And also, you can step here and trigger that one over there for real no purpose. Now, uh, some of you might even be paying attention to the dark corridor over here. The reason is that it hides, yep, exactly those wonderful Desert Eagle shots, but yeah, they come with their own danger. There they are. So, this one is set up so nicely that you really expect it. And don't worry about picking up the rocket here, it triggers nothing. It is some of the tiles next to it that trigger the boulder all the way in that corridor. And just when you thought that's it, oh no! <laughs> From the dark room over there, the final boulder comes, okay? So, but you can really very easily dodge it and go ahead and pick up the grenades. But what's evil about it is that the torch is unlit, and only once the boulder is triggered, that's when it lights up and shows you. Oh, there's a certain doom, you know, coming your way. So, really evil, nasty trap. But that's it. That's really it for the entire room. So, it's really not as tough as it was back in Unfinished Business. There are also no exploding mutants assaulting us, which is always a benefit. And yeah, we'll get on the other side of these iron bars very soon, but first of all... Well, you know, as is set up in the beginning of the level, this is very trap-themed, trap-oriented one, yeah? And there will be a couple of gauntlets full of traps. They really love the wall spikes in these levels. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and run through it... Uh, to the best of my ability, but one move I want to make you aware of is that when you are climbing up a certain ledge or a movable block or whatever you decide, this thing ahead of us, uh, you can hold the control key and pull up by pressing up. Seems kind of intuitive, doesn't it? What you can also do instead is press the crawl button instead of pressing up. So as you are up there hanging, you know, instead of pressing up, press the crawl button and Lara will actually climb up faster and this will help us get out of harm's way. She will appear in a crawl instead of standing up, but this is still enormously useful, as I'll soon demonstrate. So yeah, obvious setup and Nathan McCree's music. Yeah, okay, now let's make a few steps and try and pick up, okay, the MP5 clips. And now, as we'll be up, the crawl button is the key to success. And we have avoid taking, avoided taking any damage. Wonderful, but no time to get complacent, because yeah, there is yet another one. So, uh, every walkthrough I checked online didn't mention this trick. They always seem to have said that you will take at least some minuscule damage when climbing, but if you use the crawl button to get up, you can avoid taking any damage. So, I'm super happy I figured this out. It really just randomly occurred to me that, hmm, I wonder if there are less animation frames for that movement or something like that, and I wonder if this is something the... Uh, uh, level designers were aware of at the time that you need to use the crawl to get up and let me just demonstrate what I did so instead of pressing up to pull up into a standing position what I did is I pressed the crawl key and that's it it might not seem shorter but perhaps during an earlier animation frame of this movement uh, the game will decide that Lara is standing on top of this tile instead of being on this tile over here, so maybe that's what helps us avoid the spikes damage, even though it's perhaps clipping through Lara's body, yeah? And we will use this at least two more times in this level, so that's really interesting. I I never really put that to any practical use back in Tomb Raider 3, but now, woohoo, I'm super happy about that. Okay, oh, no time to rest. Okay, I'm trying to conserve as much ammunition as I can, Hence the short... Ooh! Okay, bursts of fire, because th these are the Uzis we picked up, you know, in that muddy slope in Highland Fling, you know, and they came preloaded with 40 bullets, and we just used 36 of them to bring down four crows. Now that is amazing, because if I'm not mistaken, and usually I'm not, that's... Okay, that's all the crows we'll be seeing in this level, yeah? So, and pretty much I think all the Uzi action we'll have until we find more ammunition. And using shotgun on Kraus, well, maybe you remember how that turned up during the Thames Wharf level in London. Okay, careful there. 
You can actually always look up, but there is no guarantee to knowing which particular tile will trigger which piece of the falling debris, so uh, it's really kind of a trial and error kind of basis. Now the interesting thing about this gauntlet is that you can actually stick around for a while and climb back to one of the lower levels and reach a secret, okay? And then there is a particular nasty way out of there, an alternative one, but that would make us miss the large health pack we picked up at the slope over there with the torch where I demonstrated my uh, crow climb uh, function, so instead I decided to revisit that area a bit later on which I also think is how the level was designed, but originally I was doing it the well, quote-unquote wrong way around. So just stick to the more obvious path, in this particular case it's uh, more rewarding. Overall we have yet another box of flares, so yeah, once again, you start with two but soon you'll have more flares than you'll know what to do with. And let's get up. We should actually get an interesting shot as soon as we climb the little block over here. There it is, yet another dog statue, watching our movements, and a lever. Now, as a player, you are not really supposed to know this after playing Highland Fling, but I'm gonna tell you, none of these statues will turn into dogs anymore, okay? But still, they make you paranoid after what we've been through before. Now, that doesn't mean we've seen the last of the dogs. Oh, dear God, no. Now, let's get our shotgun ready, because <laughs> you know what's up ahead. <laughs> Yet another successful dog hunt. Woohoo! Having so much fun with this. Not sure what it says about me, but there you go. Okay, and now let's. Okay, okay. Circling around and rolling to get out of harm's way pretty much works. And once again, to trigger a particular trigger tile, you only need to step on a small part of it. You don't need to get to the center. So just going through the corners like this, oh dear god, is very helpful. And we have our lovely Vertigo music playing, so you know what that means? It's climbing time. Once again, Red Vine, by now we know what its feature is, so let's put it to good use, exactly. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this level should be much shorter than the Highland Fling level. By now you know, by looking at the video's length, uh, me personally, at the time of recording this, I have absolutely no idea how long it's gonna take. I assume it will be shorter, according to my notes but we'll just see how much I'll struggle with it. Now up here, there's no more debris, although there are still holes in the roof, so to speak, of this tower. There's the dog statue that's been watching us and unnerving us, but as I said, it is perfectly safe, so do not worry. It's just a bit of an obstacle. And let's actually try and jump directly over there, because it might not look like it, especially when put next to these two, but <laughs> there's a lever placed on one of these uh, small windows. I think these were used to fire from uh, ballistas or crossbows, um, that's why so thin, you know, kind of like a anti-fire or uh, projectile protection from the castle. And, uh, okay, let's hope the statue's not gonna push me off. Okay, great. As you can hear from my voice, I'm not super confident about this, even though I practiced a few times, so I should have nothing to worry about. Oh, now this is a particular particularly interesting corridor because of its verticality. It has several levels, but it's not really as confusing. First, I'm gonna just take you here to show you a little tease of what's up ahead. We see a stairway leading into a presumably large area and a guard standing at attention, okay? This will be a very interesting room story-wise, and there are three guards stationed. You might have noticed both of them patrolling in the distance. These are actually the only guys like this we'll see in this level, and actually, that's it for the rest of the game, yeah? Oh dear god, I completely forgot there's an open gap in there, okay, thank goodness that turned out well. So, first of all, the way to continue, even though it might seem a bit counterintuitive, is up, okay? You can climb on the ledge just above Lara's head and continue on with the level. So, of course, we want to do the exact opposite and explore what's up ahead, yeah? Now, I did mention a secret back in that wall spikes gauntlet, so that's actually where we are headed right now. But first of all, let's drop to a safe spot. And yeah. Some of you might just decide to ignore this altogether. After this long walk through the spikes, all you really get your hands on is yet another box of flares. That's. Yeah, it, it's really up to you to decide whether you want it or not, but. I think I kind of want it just because it's a pickup, you know, out of principle. 
Not because I really want the flares, uh, but there you go. And actually, slowly walking through here, we can already see Abandon Hope, all ye who enter here. Oh dear god. So, yeah, the, I'm not gonna lie, this is one of the toughest parts of the entire expansion. So, I hope I created enough suspense for you guys, because, uh, oh, okay. I have a particular way of tackling this challenge. Now, I hope I aligned Lara correctly. As you can see up, maybe, kind of, uh, the kind of samey texture makes it very difficult to spot, but that is a spike ceiling. And what do spike ceilings do in general? They drop down, don't they? Now, of course, it's gonna take some time for it to go all the way down, yeah? But, uh... The problem here is that it's not to get across, it's to pick up the small health pack and not take any damage. So, you can just maybe diagonally jump and ignore it, as I said, it's one small health pack and probably without any practice you're gonna take, end up taking more damage than the small health pack would really cover. So, some of you might decide to ignore it, that's absolutely fair enough. In case you do want to pick it up, here is what uh, sometimes works for me. Okay, okay. Uh, make a standing jump, hold the action key, Lara will go into her grabbing motion and the trajectory will decrease a little. We don't want her to over jump, and as soon as you fall down, make a roll. And keep holding the action key and Lara should go into pick up the small health pack animation straight away. Damn it! I knew it! Just if we were just a tiny bit closer. Okay, let's crawl climb out of here. Ah, God damn it! Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. What should have happened was that after the roll, roll, Lara would directly go into the pickup animation. She did not, and I have no idea why. Sometimes when I do this, I'm too far away, sometimes I'm too close. I can just... N I think out of eight attempts, I managed to do this twice, and to this day, I don't know what I did differently. Nevertheless, thanks to the crawl climb, we took less than half damage, okay? If we were to use the ordinary climb, we'd be in much more trouble. For now, uh, this also unnerves me, because the... Spiky ceiling is not low enough to completely avoid our jump trajectory, so Lara might just scratch her foot. Oh, okay, this worked nicely. Great. Now what we have over here, if you remember, pressing one of the levers uh, revealed a ceiling going, well, being triggered. Yeah, and this is exactly what happened, so what we did here, we pressed the lever and made this gauntlet a bit easier on ourselves, and now it dropped completely. So, really, let's just make a grabbing jump to make sure we don't hit our head. And now... Oh, dear God, here we go again. The problem is, the same technique will not work here, okay? I seem to remember, if we take two walking steps back, yeah, we should be able to land directly on the tile with the shotguns. I'm gonna hold the control key, and I hope it's the correct way to do it. Of course not. God damn it, Lara. Okay, let's see if the crawl climb will save us. Oh dear god, so... Whew. Okay, this bit is a, just a bit more forgiving. You can still screw up and crawl climb and still get away without a single scratch, okay? So it's the small health pack one that is much, much, oh, oh god, I mean much tougher now. But that's not all of it. Oh no, that'd be too simple, wouldn't it? What we need to do now is just beyond all reason and logic, okay? Now once again there is a hole, there is a spike ceiling, and you might be thinking, okay, let's just get to one of the ledges, we can already see some shotgun shells and other goodies there. Let's just get across, you know, it's simple. The problem is, we have... The way to continue is actually down there in that pit if you want to reach the first secret. So what we need to do is we need to pick up not one, but two pickups in that ledge over there and still make it down before the ceiling comes down, okay? Now, this one I didn't have as hard time as with the previous ones, but still I... Oh, I'm just not super confident. Okay, so... You know, standing around here, let's make a running jump. And hopefully Lara will start grabbing that box of 
shotgun shells straight away. All oh, that worked nicely. Now let's turn her to the right a little, make a hop back, pick this one up, and let's just go, 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 Lara. Okay, some damage. I'm not sure if it is avoidable or not. I never managed to avoid it, but just crawl through and you'll be safe. One final look at that room. As you can see, there is thankfully nothing on the ground, but I think if there would be a pickup down there, we would still have enough time to take it. And there it is, abandoned hole, all ye who enter here. So maybe the developers thought that, yeah, this is a valid entry as well. So when we, this might actually look familiar, when we originally entered this uh, wall spikes gauntlet, I climbed to this tear and then I climbed back down to see what's behind the wall of spikes and my instinct was correct. That's where the goodies and the first secret are, yeah. So this is the way from which I started tackling this gauntlet and it was much, much tougher in fact. Uh, absolutely impossible to do without taking any damage and also this spiky wall over here just blocked our way to the large health pack over there. So in case you are interested in all the goodies and having a less of a hard time just do it in this order. It works out much better. Saying that, you might be wondering how the hell do we get out? There's a lever ahead of us but I'll pull it once we'll be on our way back. For now, let's just pick up two bundles of harpoons. Once again, very generous with those. Very happy about that. And that's not all. This is where the secret is actually triggered. So, more MP5 clips. That's the third time, and there are more to come in this level. So, that's absolutely wonderful, seeing as what a wonderful damage per second MP5 weapon is. And now we can press the lever over here and open the way up. There we go. And actually, you might have seen some debris on the other side of the door when I was just peeking through. This is where the small health pack was, the four crows ambushed us, that kind of thing. And it's 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 very good that we already triggered it, so we don't have to deal with it now. And also, this is why you cannot reach the large health pack in that hall over there behind the grate, because all these slopes are slippery, so there is no accessing this corridor. So once again, another reason why it's good to go through the trap gauntlet and uh, revisit secret one via this way now. We'll just be climbing all the way back up through the red wines to get into that spiky corridor because I already teased you with what's up ahead with the patrolling guards, yeah? That's exactly where we need to go. Ah, uh, yeah, the debris is a dynamic object so Laura might fool around a bit but it's no biggie. Just line her properly. Wow, okay, but still, you know, I have to be honest, I am super happy that we actually let me t look at our health bar we have half of our health remaining now considering what we've been through that's still quite amazing the st I, I kind of wish I performed better but truth be told you know if this would be me me really feeling like I failed I would never post this video I would just re-record the whole thing but the problem is everything I told you and I did in that gauntlet room just sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't so I don't really feel that I could really offer you more advice just by repeating it until it magically works. You would just end up doing the same thing and being frustrated, why the hell didn't it, you know? So, uh, you know, uh, also I'm quite happy that we have a low amount of health because I'm very curious how I'm gonna get through the next stage. Okay, and on the very top over here, finally. Uzi ammunition, the very first one in this game, not counting the weapon pickup itself. Okay. And this is where things get really interesting. Now, you know that the name of this level is Villard's Lair, right? Well, I believe we have just about found it. Now, there is a secret, secret library that's one of the patrolling guards that we've seen from below, behind the grate. There are a couple of statues, once again I'll just assume Villard holds his ancestors in high regards, so that's what these guys will be. And an absolutely beautiful tapestry of the Loch Ness monster. Now I'm not actually sure just how old the myth about the monster of the lake is, but... Um, well, you can clearly see where Villard got his inspiration to build his own, yeah? <laughs> but I'm just curious if back in medieval ages there were, you know, legends about there being some monster in the lake and if it was described as such a sea serpent, you know, this is what I'm actually unclear on, would be interesting read. Maybe if I'll find something I'll post a link in the description below. I'm just kind of curious how old the myth really is. And we have the family crest over here that we've seen repeatedly. 
But before we take the stairs down to say hello to the guards over there, let's climb up here. This, once again, you might decide whether it's worth your time or not, but there is just a... I believe it's a small health pack that we get to find after doing a bit of a climbing exercise. Let me see. I'm hoping there will be at least some magnificent view to accompany us. Oh my god, yes, absolutely. Let me see. Okay, now, maybe this rings a bell, maybe it doesn't. But this is exactly where the quicksand was, and we decided to take the high path. One of the crawls started appearing back in the highland fling level. So we used a slope and a slope to get around. Then there was a manure stuck on that green block over there, but they somehow removed it. I'm not sure why. And there was more quicksand we waded through to get through the level. So this is really a nice throwback. It really feels like this is part of one castle being connected. And it will get even better as we progress through the level. So much to look forward to. Now, uh, this is a quick way down, yeah, but I do not want to take it because it involves taking damage. Considering we do not have much to spare, I'm instead going to play it safe, okay? Hope you can forgive me for that. And now we should be able to just crawl back. Unfortunately, we'll have to turn around. Once again, if I'm not mistaken, I think in Tomb Raider 5 there's a move where you can crawl down from a crawl space whilst facing forward. And quite a stylish one as well. It's a bit of a somersault on the ground. Okay. And now... Ho, ho, ho. You know what? Let's get our shotgun ready. I still believe that is the best weapon to tackle these guys. And at least we'll get to enjoy the shotgun early on and maybe move on to different weapons in the next levels. Okay, we already hit A. He's crawling, hoping to avoid some of the pellets. Please, when did that ever work? Now they're just running around like scared chicken, let's see. I think they're confused because they cannot actually climb, like some more standard human enemies can. So what I'm gonna do is maybe just wait for them here. But if both of them show up with a slow rate of fire, that can be a potential problem. Okay, Lara, no, please shoot at the nasty gentleman here. Oh, okay. So we unfortunately wasted one shot of the shotgun. Ah, damn it. I was so hoping for a clean go through with this, but, you know, at least we hit our targets. Now, actually, two of these guards, and accidentally at the very same spot, they dropped one box of flares and just one small health pack. You know, it's still nice. Most of the enemies don't really drop anything in Tomb Raider 3. This is not Tomb Raider 2, where you can pretty much expect every other enemy to drop something, unfortunately. But the way forward is clear, and oh my god, here we get another look at the tapestry, now comprised of not two, but eight squares. Oh, I love this so much, this piece of history. And even better, talking about a piece of history... Oh, do you see that? These are one of the Eidos uh, boxes released back in 90s. I think this kind of box uh, shape, uh, the well, it's not triangular, it has four angles, but... Uh, it was used even for games like Final Fantasy VII and I believe for every Tomb Raider release up until Tomb Raider 4. So this is great and not only, not only is it Tomb Raider 2, it's actually Tomb Raider 2 Gold. Maybe you can see the little detail that uh, the Roman numeric 2 is in red and the gold little lettering is actually in gold at the very bottom. And it has a snowy background which hints at the cold Alaska in the Golden Mask <laughs> expansion levels. So this is what these guys are doing here, you know, playing through the Cold War, the Fool's Gold, the Furnace of the Gods, the Kingdom levels, hoping one day they'll get to meet the woman herself, and when they do, she blasts them away with a shotgun. But, you know, that's something they should have learned to expect by now. Now, even more interestingly, what you see here is a lot of gibberish, but what we see here are three maneers lined up, a person inserting what they refer to only as a key into what looks like a large door. But in the terms of game mechanics, it's probably going to be a keyhole for a key item. Now, I mentioned one other key item other than the crowbar, and there it is. Now, it might not occur to you that it is in fact a pickupable object. This is something they would have used for Tomb Raider 4, but not really back in these days, you know. So, what it actually is, is a cairn key. So, maybe it unlocks an entrance to a cairn? 
Well, that remains to be found out, okay? So this actually is the key, literally, to the third secret of the game, whereas the crowbar is the key to the second secret of the game, okay? But, as you can see on the table here, there are more hints at... Well, this is where he did his research before he ended up in India, back in the during the events of Tomb Raider 3. He knew exactly where the Eye of Isis is, owned by Sophia Lay, back in London, the Infada Stone in India, the Element 115, taken by the US government in Nevada, and then the Aura Dagger, held by the natives in South Pacific. So, and I actually assume that Lara cooperated with him and used his research as well to get around the different geographical locations back in Tomb Raider 3. I mean, I don't think that in between India and Antarctica they haven't met up. I think they cooperated, it just wasn't quite as important to make uh, pre-rendered cutscenes in, into the game. And yeah, there is also a map of the British Isles. Now, this is really interesting because you may be thinking, okay, why? You know, there, there was clearly a big focus and it seems he had several associates who did some research with him looking at it. And actually, it's no secret when I say that the entire Lost Artifact expansion happens in the regions displayed on this map, okay? Uh, so basically what we have here is the Ireland, the Northern Ireland, we have Scotland, Wales, England and there we have uh, after the after the underwater tunnel we see just a little bit of France okay attached at the very corner so this is exa exactly where this short adventure will take place and I like that the map kind of hints at that it really seems well thought out and remember, back in the previous level, I was saying when you see these kinds of crates with these logos of the Hand of Rathmore, maybe try moving them. Please try and move this one at least, okay? Because this will reveal the way to the second secret. We'll also need the crowbar, but, you know, I kind of assume you have it. If not, in the very least, you'll be disappointed. Uh, why did I make it sound like that's a good thing? I truly do not know. Yeah, actually, these uh, very shallow recessions in the floor, they are kind of hints as to, yeah, just what directions you should or realistically can move the crates to, keeping in mind that Lara needs a space of her own. And there it is, the same padlock door as in Highland Flink, so by now you know exactly what to do. Love how it fits the rocky textures. And there we are, but what's that you were saying, no secret chime? You would be correct. This is not in fact the secret, this is just the way to the secret, but it's really part of the same thing. I mean, once you get here, I find it very unlikely that you would miss the secret itself. Now, the only reason to move this crate, don't worry, this is not a complicated uh, block puzzle, is just to get our hands on the MP5 clips, yeah. The block puzzle is, uh, well, concentrated in this corner over here. Thankfully, we have a lot of space behind Lara's back to move the crate out of the way. But by doing that, we'll reveal yet another set of MP5 clips. Now, I'm not entirely sure if that's it for MP5 clips, but even if it is, that's 5 times 60, that's 300 shots, that is amazing, okay? Yeah, there they are. My memory still serves me well. And actually, we can push you out of the way, if I'm not mistaken, already, yeah. Okay, great. And now we are almost at the second secret. Actually, yeah, uh, we've already seen this, but there is yet another blueprint chart of the Loch Ness Monster. So it's really interesting, in case you did not discover that secret back in Highland Fling, what would be the player's thoughts just looking at this? Maybe the player would assume, oh my god, he found the real monster of the Loch Ness and he did some research on it. Where is it? I want to see it. And then the Scot second Scotland level ends. That'd be very disappointing. So yeah, you things really start making more sense if you do discover all the secrets. And there it is, and I must say this one is pretty damn underwhelming. I mean, yeah, it's a large health pack, it's always good, but... Um, eh, well, the British Isle maps, it cannot be shot through, it, it cannot be pushed, pulled, nothing like that. It was already, you know, the center of attention in the previous room with all the chairs and lights centered on it, so... By now you know that there's something going on, so that was a bit underwhelming. I would want something like this. This would be a far more rewarding secret. Actually, I cannot really decipher the images on the left. If any of you can tell me what you see, what it's supposed to represent, I'd be very grateful. Oh my god, it's number five! Highlighted that there is a fifth artifact. Okay, that's awesome. But what about the pictures above it? I truly do not know. 
too low resolution, unfortunately. Okay. Now, it is not a coincidence that we get this amazing top-down view of Lara. Okay. The reason we do is... Huh, because this is an... Oh, I, I just love this little puzzle. Uh, basically, the only point of this corridor is to get our hands on the shotgun shells, but also some of the tiles you step on, including the one over here, usually tiles uh, located in front of these beige, brown, bleak-looking, faded-out bookcases. Not the vibrant, colorful ones, but these ones. If you stand in front of them, usually this triggers something, yeah? Now, the problem here is that we just triggered the way out behind a particular bookcase. However, getting to it is a bit tricky because uh, the tile over here at the entrance and the very top, these both also trigger the exit. And if you step on them now, the exit's just gonna close. So instead, use the tile in the center, which is partially covered by the bookcase. So you need to carefully walk through the set tile yeah, to not close the bookcase over there. And now I think we should be safe. Okay. And we can just run through, yeah? Ah, perfect. And now both are revealed. So that's pretty much it, yeah? And actually, the first two times I played this, I just naturally found the level exit and I didn't even think about how it was triggered. But the last time I played it, I was stuck here because it kept closing because I kept going through that entry and the top tile over and over and over again and I could not figure out what I'm doing wrong. I went as far as to think that the game was glitched or something along those lines. Oh dear, radiation warning. Uh, this is really turning into a supervillain lair, isn't it? Now what is the guy holding in there, I wonder? A wooden ramp leading to... Well, there's an ominous music, if I ever heard one. Let's light up a fly, won't we? A couple of dark corners here with nothing really in them, but, oh my god, sickly green goo. You know what? Let's let's be brave. Let's step into it. And make your shotgun ready. Oh, <laughs> you cannot see this bastard coming because he's completely covered by... Wow, two music triggers. Interesting. By a safe! That is unfortunately empty. Now, I'm not sure if the tile the safe is on is lethal or not, but the one next to it definitely is, so I'm not going to try and walk into the safe, but... Okay. Someone beat us to it. This is where the Hand of Rathmore was, as even shown on the loading screen of this level. And it's empty. And it was taken out in such a brute way that it's now just this strange element. I guess this is what the Americans classified as element 115 because it's an artifact from the same for the same meteorite yeah so let's call it element 115 that we see are oh, just turning into a gooey mess now we don't want to step on that because lara will die and turn herself on fire instead let's light up a safe kind of fire which will show us the way to just a few pickups over here and a lovely theme it always warms my heart when I hear this. It's so innocent, so nostalgic. It's like a brief respite from an absolute hell that most of the Tomb Raider 3 levels are, although this theme actually comes back from Tomb Raider 2. It's the very same track used, but... Okay, another view of something that might not look as familiar because this was not part of the Highland Fling level. We will get here. This, what we are looking at, is in fact the third secret of the game. And we see a couple of these meniers, these tall stones aligned. One, two, three tall ones, two small ones. If you remember the blackboard, which had a bit of a diagram with a chalk written on it, there was a person aligned with three of these meniers inserting a key into a keyhole, or something along those lines. This, along with this view, is a hint of, although a very vague one, of how to reach the third and final secret of the level. And actually saying that... I still haven't even opened up the stat screen, so this should be the Temple Ruins level, at least that's what Windows thinks, so it should be four secrets? Yeah, okay, this time it shows two out of four secrets. So in the next one it should have an identical number of secrets as in River Ganges, which actually might be three identically, but yeah, once again, this is a Lost Artifact Expansion level, so there are three secrets to be found here, yeah? 
Now, and once again, I'll just do a little save before the level exit and I'll switch on to the unpatched version. So, for those of you who enjoy that kind of thing, you'll get to see uh, <laughs> white screen Lara completely unpatched. It's going to be hilarious in the very least. But for those of you who are not interested in the secrets, uh, you can actually exit the level straight away. Okay, let's get across that element. Because... Our faithful companion is already waiting for us. There he or she or whoever is really controlling the helicopter is waiting patiently. Once again, the Union Jack Airways, of course. And yeah, that's where the helicopter is going to settle. Now, what's even more impressive is that you might recognize this view because there was a top-down camera view when we were carried by this stream over into the Highland Fling, the lake where we backtracked so many times to get all the goodies. This is the bridge we were looking at from the other direction. So, once again, this is somewhere where the level exit is, where the so-called village well is. So the helicopter pretty much waits for us exactly where it left off, but for some reason it was landing here yet again. But I see some movement in there, oh my god. Yeah, so there is a kind of a closed crawl space, uh, also part of the secret number three, but uh, you can go there without really triggering the secret, that's entirely up to you. And this, this right here does not look like a dynamic object, does it? And yet it is. This barrier will disappear as soon as we use the Cairn key, okay? So that's where the secret three is. The problem is with the lock mechanism, it's completely somewhere else, oh my god. So from that regard, it doesn't make much sense, unfortunately, but uh, you don't have to look for long, because someone blew a hole for us. How convenient. The same person who stole the Hand of Rathmore from the safe, no doubt. So there it is, and you might recognize this area. This was exactly where, in Highland Fling, the couple of goodies were here, and as soon as you picked the large health pack over here, the two dog statues came alive and tried to bite Lara's hands off. So, yeah, we are back here, uh, we cannot really go back to the previous section of the level because of the suddenly appeared grate over here. <laughs> I remember complaining about this lighting texture. But yeah, so, it, it makes you feel kind of silly to think of all the trouble we went through, all the spikes, boulders, traps, enemies to reach the safe, and someone just came in, blew a hole in this very wall, and took the <laughs> the artifact from the safe, and it really makes you think that this must have been one of Villard's collaborators. I mean, who else would know exactly where it's hidden, right? So it really raises interesting points. But enough blabbering. I'm so sorry about that, by the way. Look at this. Would you ever figure out this is a keyhole? In Tomb Raider 4, they have many of these respectacles, but at least they are three-dimensional. Here, it's just a blurry, pixelated mess. It's actually the tile on the floor which hints at something important. There you go, just put the Karen E key in and watch the events unfold. Okay, so there is a whole army of Scotsmen! Okay, okay. This is not good. Lara, please ready your shotgun. Okay, they managed to hit us once, but there's no way I'm giving up. Okay, I really want to finish this level without using any kind of health pack. Now, where are you going, you idiot? Oh my god. Can you please just... Oh, I don't want to get too close, you're just gonna kill me. He's trying to lure me into certain doom. Ah, certain doom doesn't sound so bad, does it? Okay, it seems we already managed to take a shot at him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there they are. We came for a trip to Scotland, so... We will not be leaving disappointed. I mean, wow. Just look at them. And... This, actually, from the distance it might look like a black eye, but this is definitely a purple face paint, you know, just covering half of their face. A war paint, really. Okay, so what on earth? We are on the border of 20th and 21st century, yeah? Why are there just medieval Scotsmen coming alive, okay? 
What I think is going on seeing as we stepped through the many graves of Villard's ancestors is that the artifact somehow, when it was released from the safe, started just <laughs> resurrecting people from their graves and turning them mad. I really think these are Dr. Villard's ancestors coming alive after the artifact was released and the element is flowing all through this. And I think this would also explain the dog statues, yeah, coming alive. It somehow reanimated them all. Oh. It's just so weird, but I love it. I love this kind of crazy stuff. I bet the developers just thought, okay, we have to have manly, burly Scotsmen with swords in this level. Doesn't matter how we justify it, we just need them in there. And that's <laughs> exactly what they did. So be careful about this guy not pushing you into the river, so to speak. And, uh, oh dear God. How do we take care of you without dying, seeing as we have to crawl? I do not like this. Maybe... Maybe we can be really cheap and... Uzi's Lara. Will you please aim at the gentleman? Oh, God damn it. No, of course she won't. Okay. Oh, my God. I'm so nervous right now. I have not saved, of course, because that's how I play these games and... Okay, good, good, very job well done. If we really make it through this level at this stage, uh, uh, that's just gonna be legendary. Okay, so I reward more Uzi clips and a large health pack, which no, I refuse to use at this point. Even better, another view at the bridge over there, yeah? But we've pretty much already seen it from where the helicopter was landing, but I, I'm not entirely sure, but Nah, this is not the Scotsman that was shown in the very intro. No, 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 this is a different one. The scenery he was standing on was quite different, but... Come to think of it, these guys are actually... When I listen to the noises they make, these guys are actually just retextured tribals from the South Pacific, the coastal village. They move and attack in the same way. Well, the ones with the clubs, that is, not with the poisonous blow darts. So that's what they did, they just changed the model somewhat, and I think it's really smart, because they swing the weapon, which could really be applicable for swords as well. I mean, by now they must be rusty and blunt, they are more for bashing Lara's head in rather than cutting. Ladies and gentlemen, Secret 3. Now, you want to know something very ironic? It's that we've been here before. <laughs> Do you remember this pair of Scottish flags? This is the very beginning of the Highland Fling level, the family crest, and this is where the dog statue was. Once upon a time, that is. Nowadays it seems to have blown up, revealing an exit. These doors were open, leading into the villa as well. This is where the, op the first obstacle we climbed over, using the red wines, and this is where, well, we did get a look at our helicopter, but I don't... I think vertically this was a bit of an oversight from their side, so they just decided to patch it up and put the helicopter a bit higher. Anyway, this is the beginning of the Highland Flink, but this time it's this door that is revealed. Whether due to us inserting the cairn key in or the explosion, I assume there was an explosion, I mean look at the mess that the castle is in, this has revealed an entrance to a secret meadow. Oh dear god. And the music hints at trouble. But wonderful, epic, beautiful kind of trouble. Oh my god, we did get hit. We missed a shot from the shotgun, but we still live. That's all that matters, right? Uh, uh, god damn it. Okay, okay, as long as you're alone, we're gonna get along just fine. Good. But I don't think that's gonna last for long. Surely there's. Uh, of course. Sometimes they are so slow, and at other times they are just so very fast. Oh dear god. Oh, but I love this music so much. And that's actually the alternate level exit, in case we didn't reach the helicopter more directly. But first, the entire point of the secret. More Uzi clips? Yes. But also, in case you did not pick them up back in Highland Fling, for which I really cannot blame you, you can get them here on this wonderful pedestal. And something leading to Stonehenge, well that is if we could reach it, but unfortunately there's no going further. Really the rest is left to our imagination, but this is clearly some sacred place of worship for Villard's ancestors, druidic runes around, and wow. 
What a crazy world we live in, isn't it, Lara? Did we just retrigger the music? I find that very possible. Uh, okay, fine. But, uh. Okay. okay, so this is what happens when you use the shotgun from a bit too much of a distance. Some of the pellets scatter, and as a result, we wasted yet another shot. I think that's three shotgun shots we literally wasted so far, but come on, look at our health. We can't be too picky in a situation like this. Now come back, you... Ugh. No, you're not gonna trick me. Whew. Okay, okay. And I still have two more. Good, because we'll need them for that very final enemy of this level. Ah, look at all these manures. Yeah, these are actually those that were shown on the blackboard chart, I believe, although they don't look aligned at all. Ah, strange stuff, really. But yeah, these Scotsmen, these Highlanders, or how would I really call them, they actually drop nothing. Nothing useful for Lara, I imagine. Now, have that shotgun ready. Because there is a final one. Oh my god, that was close. No, leave the pistols, Lara. This is a no pistols challenge level from now till the end of the expansion. So, no, okay? Have the Uzis ready instead. Actually, we've accumulated 244 shots so far. That's very good. And you can see some of the element seeping in even here. So wherever these Scotsmen are, that's where the element was active somehow. And, oh, wow. It really seems to resurrect dead people back to life. And actually, there'll be something going on later on which seems to confirm my theory, but later about that. Uh, just another torch here. Let's try not set Lara on fire. <laughs> Hi there, friend. I'm sorry for skipping the music, but uh, that's what happens when you enter here. Ah, there's the lovely military doodle again that plays whenever we seem to see the helicopter. Takes me really back to the high security compound levels, but uh, let's think of a past now. This is just... This level has attitude. They put another dog statue here, even though none of them have really turned into living enemies so far. They just put it here to remind you you're being watched and you never let your guard down. And by the way, I know where you had it. Ah, oh, this unnerves me so much. I, I love it though, from the creativity point of view. Now, let me just save the game right here before we'll cross that finish line. Because what I'll do is I'll once again switch into the unpatched version of the game so that instead of 3 out of 4 secrets, we'll see 3 out of 3 secrets. Much nicer, isn't it? So let me just... Uh, let me save right here. And with just a magical press of a button, we'll see the unpatched Lara. Now that's actually unfortunately not how it works. And there we go. The unpatched, non-white screen Lara is already just staring at you, judging you, wondering what's the hold up. So, uh, let's not keep the poor woman waiting. I mean, just look at her health. She must be really grumpy right now. Okay, so there we go. Villard's Lair. Time taken 53 minutes, 11 seconds. So, okay. It was just a bit shorter than Hell and Flink. Then again, I feel I did so much talking in this particular level that uh, I pretty much doubled the time it takes to really beat it. <laughs> Other than that, we have found all three secrets. We have killed all 21 enemies. And if I'm not gravely mistaken, which I'm not, we have found all 41 items in this level. So overall, a great success since we have not used any health packs and we have expended all our shotgun shells up to this point. Ah, that's great. I really feel like we use the weapon to its potential. So maybe we'll get to see some Uzi action next time. I'll, I'll really keep it open. Anyway, thank you guys for being with me on these two wonderful Scottish levels. And I'll see you next time in the good old England.